Have you ever had one of those connections where you know what someone is thinking and they don't even have to say anything to you? Like you jinx in the weirdest ways. Crazy, what? we finish each other's sandwiches. That's what I was gonna say. Some years ago, I was going to the Renaissance Fair of all places, which is funny because I just made a video um, about going to one recently, but I was going um, some years ago with a different friend, and as we were leaving, we were bidding my father farewell, and um, he said, stay safe girls and avoid talking to strange men. He said it jokingly. My friend and I, in perfect sync turn around and at the exact same time with the like exact same tonality it was freaky we were like oh don't worry we'll kick him in the balls and then we turn to each other in total shock <laughs> and are like holy sh maybe it's telepathy maybe it's maybelline like this wasn't something we practiced it wasn't something we said often it was just completely random but like maybe it was a coincidence right it could have been a coincidence a weird one but then there's other things that are harder to write off as coincidence for example maybe you've heard those stories of when a twin senses that their twin dies even if they're on the other side of the world and their twin isn't sick or anything just all of a sudden they're like oh that person in my life died and sometimes happens between um, other connections as well but the the one that's really famous is twin telepathy i have a story i've shared before uh where i was i had the same dream as another person we were literally in the dream together and interacted and we confirmed the details the following day that's something called dream telepathy i had another wacky telepathy experience recently uh, and it happened when i was at the shooting range and there's a person that i try to avoid in this city, there's a couple of them. They just won't leave me alone. Please leave me alone. Leave me alone. Please leave me alone. And um, I knew all of a sudden that this person had entered the building. And it's really weird because I was in the shooting range area, right? Which no one else was there. I have noise canceling headphones on. I'm super zoned in. Um, and it's in a completely separate room from the front room. You cannot hear anything. You've got double doors, um, like these big steel doors that you have to pass through in order to get to the actual shooting area. And I was back there doing my thing and all of a sudden, like I knew this person had just walked into the building. And like 30 seconds later, um, one of the people who work at the range came running back and was like, just so you know, that person is here. And I was like, oh really? <laughs> you don't say. Now that could have been claircognizance or clairsentience, but the reason I think it was telepathy is because it hit me like with a sense of urgency. And it was the same urgency that um, the was being exuded by <laughs> the, the guy who came back to tell me that this other person was there. And so I actually felt as though when I was reflecting on this later, the reason I had picked up on that was actually because of what um, the man at the front desk was thinking. He was like, oh shit, I'd better let Kiara know. And that's one of those things like knowing someone was there before I possibly could have known that they were there. That's one of those things that's harder to write off as coincidence. And so I'm curious, have you ever had an experience like that? And if you have, is it something where it could possibly be a coincidence or is it really difficult to explain away as anything other than psychic? Kiara, telepathy isn't real. Yes, it is, my friend. Yes, it is. Sit your cute little butt down and we're going to talk about the science. Telepathy is one of those classes of experiments that have exceeded the Six Sigma threshold. And we've talked about that elsewhere, so I'll just give the quick version here. Um, if something exceeds the Six Sigma threshold, that means uh, the results are calculated at odds against chance of over a billion to one. And so, um, in other words, in other words, according to chance, we would only expect a certain outcome once out of a billion times. So. My friends and I might talk over each other a billion times in our lives, right? We might accidentally start speaking at the same time. A billion times we'll do that, but only once are we gonna say the exact same thing at the exact same time. Even if it says something as random as, uh, don't worry, we'll kick him in the balls. At some point, right, it's, that's bound to happen. The two people are just gonna say the same thing at the same time. Might happen one in a billion times. So with telepathy experiments, you have dozens upon dozens of independent studies being conducted by people, including skeptics, which is what makes this interesting. There are stories of people who were like, there's no such thing as telepathy, and then they go and they do this um, experiment called the Gonsfeld experiment, and they're like, maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> 
So in this experiment, you take Jack and you take Jill. Okay, we'll make Jack the sender and Jill the receiver. They are placed in separate rooms and um, Jill, the receiver, is going to be laying down. Um, she'll be given noise-canceling headphones by the researchers and uh, the researchers are also going to take ping pong balls, cut them in half and place them over her eyeballs. And then they're going to shine a light into her face and the result is that all Jill is going to see is like this weird red fuzzy um, glow. Oh, and the, the noise canceling headphones are also playing pink noise, which is like white noise, um, but less, but it has fewer higher frequencies. It's, it's lower sounding. That's what I'm trying to say. So Jill has her eyes open initially, but after like 10, 15 minutes of being in this weird state, um, she's not going to be able to tell whether or not her eyes are open or closed. So it's a kind of like sensory deprivation. Ooh, getting kinky in the lab. Mildly. So Jill is in this dreamy kind of altered state and um, Jack, meanwhile, is in another room and he may be looking at a live recording of Jill. Jack is given an image, a random image from the researchers, could be one of four. And usually is how they do it. They'll have like four possible options, um, neither of which is familiar to Jack or Jill, and they'll give uh, Jack one of these. Jack then tries to mentally project that image to Jill. Jill speaks in a uh, stream of consciousness way. Whatever comes into her mind, whatever mental visual imagery she's seeing, she'll just talk about that for 20 to 30 minutes and um, that's usually recorded for comparison. Let's look at a transcription of a real life a real life experiment. This is out of Supernormal, which is another fantastic book by Dean Radin. One of my favorite things I've read this year. Um, I just, I cannot recommend his work enough. If you're someone who's interested in psychic phenomena, if you're interested in the bridge between spirituality and science, I think he is the single most important author um, in this space. So 11 out of 10 recommends. 187. So one woman in this experiment, one of the receivers said this, keep feeling like looking up at tall. I'm looking up at something tall. Something about texture, texture. I feel like something has a rough texture. Tall, very tall impression, looking up high. Feel as if I'm walking around observing something, like when you would walk in an art gallery or in a museum and you would look at something. Wow. First I'm feeling like tall trees, and then I'm feeling like tall building, and then I'm like a, a Yosemite kind of image of a tall rock or a tall, some kind of a very tall, I think it's tall, guys. Solid stone something. Seeing ground, grounds. <laughs> I can't word, seeing browns and grace. Something like a feeling of walking around, looking up and being in awe of something, monolithic, or, or I don't know what the word is. I'm getting images in Mount Rushmore. I know you're not supposed to say things. Half dome, like a, like a big stone. Uh, I sort of just feel like I'm walking around in a picture and I'm giving my hands and we're climbing up and, and something about going up, there's stone. <laughs> I love this. This is what my thoughts are like too. At first I felt very much like I was in nature, forest type of setting. Now I'm feeling something more like maybe like a plaza. After, after that, Jill is given four images to look at, which are vastly different from one another. And she chooses the one of the Great Pyramid. And that was exactly the image that Jack was trying to project to Jill. And what I find so interesting about that was the themes that we saw throughout. So like, for example, she, she knew that it was something monumental. I think she used the word monolithic. And I, I mean, it is, when you think about it, monoliths are like this, right? But monumental when she was alluding to like Yosemite and Half Dome and like feeling like she was in an art gallery. So I thought that was really interesting. Like, yes, famous giant rock that humans like to look at. Maybe I'm easily impressed, but like, wow. What's even more impressive, in my opinion, is what one meta-analysis tells us about these telepathy experiments. So a meta-analysis is when uh, researchers will take all of the, the, the experiments that have been done on something, right? So in this case, all of the Gonsfeld experiments that have been conducted and published, the results have been published, and they combine those results and they look for trends. And this is a more effective way, that's the short version, this is a more effective way of um, evaluating effects than looking at a single study. Uh, you know, in a single study, things can go wrong, people can make mistakes. Um, they could even manipulate variables to get an outcome that they want. And so in order to, to prove something in the world of science, you have to independently replicate it lots and lots of times um, before it's taken as 
fact or even possibility. So this meta-analysis was conducted by Charles Onerton and Daryl Ben, both of whom we've talked about on this channel before. Um, if you're interested, Charles Otterton did a really cool meta-analysis on precognition. Um, you can find a video summary of that on my channel. It is called Yes, Precognition is Real. Daryl Bem just does all kinds of cool shit. I think the most recent video we did that involved him was called Precognitive Detection of Erotic Stimuli, which you can also find on my channel. So these two Psy researchers, these giants of Psy, come together in 1994 and they publish a meta-analysis on Gonsfeld telepathy experiments. They publish this in the Psychological Bulletin, which is kind of a big deal, and they find um, overall odds against chance of 48 billion, 48 billion to one. In other words, like, no chance it's chance. Now there's still all kinds of debate as to whether or not, um, like how valid Gonsfeld is. There's always arguments over this. And even though it's been proven and it's like religiously like, like dogmatic the way that these experiments are set up, um, there's a whole lot of resistance to the possibility of psychic phenomena. But that's all idea sex for another time. Um, that being said, if you just can't get enough idea sex, Got some more for you. That video there is um, telepathy experiments that were declassified by the CIA, a video summary of the document they declassified, pretty juicy. And that video, if you're interested in the anecdotal side of things, in that video, I share my own experiences with precognition and telepathy and all that weird shit. But in any case, thank you so much for joining me today for tumbling down the rabbit hole. Hail to the power in the site. And until next time, I hope you stay very, very blessed, my friends. What the f is my hair today? Hang on. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs>